Lord, I say, the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise them up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. Are they doing it?
chapter 6, verse 9. Let me show you who Israel is so you can understand what freedom sounds like. So you can understand the future that's going to take place on this entire earth. You understand? Hold this scripture that we got as our Isaiah. Give me second edges, chapter 6, verse 9. Go ahead. Look at second edges, chapter 6, verse 9. Uh huh. But Esau is the end of the world. This is what freedom looks it's like. You can say you're free when Esau's world starts to crumble. You can say you're free when Esau's world starts to crumble. And this happens. Go ahead. And Jacob. It's the beginning of it that follows. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. When you look at the 12 tribes of Israel right here, these are the 12 tribes, you understand, that came from Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. You understand? That is when we can say that we're free. When our oppressor's kingdom is finished, it's through, finito, that's when you can say that you're free. Right now, America is still standing. They falling, but America is still standing. You understand? Take me back to Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. Take me back to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. You understand? The Bible says that the Lord is yet going to choose Jacob, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, right? Keep reading. And will yet choose Israel. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. Do what? Set them in their own land. You can say you're free when we have our land back. The land that strangers, the land that heathens are occupying right now, that's when you can say you're free. Juneteenth did not make black people free. Keep reading and the strangers shall be joined with them, uh -huh. and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the strangers gonna be joined with us. You understand, we had to build that kingdom. We had to build America. We had to build Assyria. We had to build Babylon. We had to build Egypt, and we had to build a Roman Empire and the Grecian Empire. It says this, read it again. And they shall cleave to life, and the strangers shall be joined with them. And the strangers is going to be joined with us the way we were joined with them. We were sent into servitude underneath them. We had to serve them. We was in captivity underneath them. We had to serve them. We had to suckle their babies. We had to be the, the grinding gears of the society. Guess what? The strangers is going to be joined with us. They're going to be our servants. They're going to, they're going to cleave unto us, just like the Bible says. Give me verse 2. Verse 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Uh -huh. And the house of Israel uh -huh. shall possess them in the land. You want to be free, right? What's going to happen? What, what the house of Israel going to do? Shall possess them. What is black people going to do? Possess them. What is Latinos going to do? Possess them. What is the Native American Indian going to do? Possess them. Read it again, Israel. The house of Israel. The house of who? Israel Go ahead. shall possess them uh -huh. in the land. Of we are going to own them. You understand? We are going to own our oppressor. That is what freedom feels like. America gets to experience that freedom because they feel like they owned us. We are in captivity underneath them. The Bible says the house of Israel, they are going to serve us. They are going to be servants unto us, and we are going to possess them. That is what the Bible says. That's when you know you're free. That's when you can sit here and have the cookouts and celebrate what real freedom looks like. When you now own them, that own you. Yeah, Babylon is falling